Edward R. Murrow. We're going to talk about flying saucers. We're going to talk about them from the standpoint of reporters. Not as comedians, not as sensationalists. For the past few years, a large number of perfectly sane and reliable people have been involved in this flying saucer business. Even those of us who have never seen one have become involved. We read about them, talk about them, wonder about these reports of strange phenomena in the sky. So almost from the start, CBS has been following the story. We have been collecting material in flying saucer observations for many months. Checking, cross-checking, trying to track down leads, no matter how far afield they took us. This tonight is our report. We frankly admit that we don't know whether flying saucers actually exist. We've never seen one. We are going to bring you the facts at hand. What they add up to, well, that's for you to decide. That's up to you. It all began just a little less than three, four years ago. It began in the sky over western Washington, up there in the hip pocket of the country. Early one June morning in 1947, a C-46 Marine transport with 32 Marines aboard crashed in the vicinity of Mount Rainier. An air search was immediately organized to locate the downed plane. A person of these service pilot flyers who participated in the search was Mr. Kenneth Arnold, a businessman of Boise, Idaho, a veteran pilot in forest fire control work, a man with six years' experience flying over the rugged terrain in and around Mount Rainier. Yesterday morning, we spoke to Mr. Arnold over the phone. We asked him to repeat for us, in his own words, what he saw in the sky over Mount Rainier on June 24th, 1947. We recorded what he said, and we're going to play it for you now. The slight beep that you will hear intermittently is required by law to let both parties of a phone conversation know they are being recorded. Here now is Mr. Kenneth Arnold. It was while I was searching for this crash that I noticed a uh, terrific Not made by 